In the next hour, three stories of the paranormal, three scientific tests, only one proof positive. This video footage is supposed to contain evidence of an unexplained phenomenon, colorful auras that offer a glimpse into our personalities and our souls. Only one of these stories will be verified by scientific investigation. At the end of the show, you'll find out which case we'll test proof positive. An aura is defined as the intangible quality that surrounds a person. For those who study them, auras are not only visible, they can be documented with photographs. But can they offer information about who we are and how we behave? is the electromagnetic field around people, plants, everything, basically. The fields vary. They vary in vibration. If you hear music, you wonder why music affects you emotionally. It's because music is a wavelength. Your aura is actually a wavelength, too. Native Americans believe that the soul contains the body, and that also is contained inside the auric field. So if you put those thoughts together, then you come up with that Inside of your aura is everything you've been, everything you are, and everything you're going to be. The study of auras goes back hundreds of years. In 1777, a German physicist first observed an electrical corona discharged from a person's hand. In the late 1800s, physicist Nikola Tesla tried to photograph this phenomenon, but his methods proved too dangerous. Dr. Strong tried to duplicate the same experiment in about 1916 and nearly killed himself. Guy Coggins has worked as a for years. In those days, it took a half a million volts to get enough light to expose film. So that sort of put it into disuse for quite a while. In 1939, Semyon Kurlian, a Russian scientist, invented the first process to photograph auras, known as the Kurlian effect. In Kurlian photography, what you do is you take a metal plate, and a high voltage goes between the plate and your finger. And you take the metal plate, and you put a piece of photographic film over it. Now, the photographic film blocks the high voltage from going through in large charges, but it sort of leaks through in a corona discharge and they sort of look like this. Once the Curlian method was developed, aura research began in earnest. Everywhere they've done research on using Curlian as, as a diagnostic, as a way of seeing interaction between two people, and just about everything else you could think of, including the phantom leaf effect. That's where you can take a leaf of a plant, you can take a Curlian photograph of it, you can tear that leaf off, then when you try to take another curling photograph, you'll actually see the leaf as though it were still there. It's kind of a phantom effect, which, which fades in time. Guy Coggins has since refined the Curlian camera. Dispensing with electricity, he devised a system that combines a camera with a computer to capture a person's aura in real-time video. Like a polygraph machine, probes measure the galvanic skin response, or GSR, at specific acupuncture points on the hand. Those points reflect the bioelectric fields emanating from the corresponding parts of the body. We have two ways of sensing him. One is through the sensor box, which gives the information for the aura itself. And then we have just a simple camera, which gives the visual information for the face, so that the placement is the same. And right now, we're recording it to a deck, or we can print it from the printer. Once the aura is photographed, the results are interpreted by aura readers like Mary Beth Spitz, 
who matches the colors with their corresponding personality traits. They're probably the most... Uh, ours are very much a reflection of your emotional state. So if you're feeling a little more depressed, you'll probably see some blue in your aura. If you're feeling happy, humorous, you're going to see yellow in your aura. If you're feeling crazy, wild, you'll see magenta. If you're feeling angry, you'll see red in your aura. There's no good color or no bad color. We all experience many different colors of the aura spectrum. Tan is a mental color. They're the scientists, the researchers, very down to earth. They actually do very well in relationships. Green is a very business-like color. They are planners, they have objectives, they set goals, they make lists, they like to make a lot of money, and they usually do. They're very driven. An emotional reaction can trigger a change in aura, as Guy demonstrates with this kissing test. You could try just kissing, interesting. Wow, that's the effect. Conversely, an auric shift can also be triggered by anxiety. Are you ready to go to Iraq and put on your black jacket and get your gun? And... Oh, we got some, yes, yeah, we got a change there. Are auras truly an indicator of human behavior? Or, as skeptics suggest, are they simply natural electrical fields, unrelated to biology? The New College Dictionary defines aura as a supposed field, so the aura doesn't really exist. But if you call it a biofield, then it's real. And if you can measure it, then it becomes scientific. I would say at the very, very least, there are gases emitting from us, there's molecules emitting from us, there's humidity emitting from us. And if we can image that and see that, that in itself can show that there's an effect. To test Guy's theories, we assembled a group of volunteers. Next, Mary Beth will analyze their color fields. The test subjects will then verify whether her findings are accurate. Some volunteers appear open to the experience. I'm really excited about having my aura read today. It's something I've never done before. I do know that there are people that can see colors or surrounding you, and they're able to interpret them. Christy, I see some red in your photograph here. Reds are um, also very passionate, um, very sensual, and very sexual. Other subjects so are skeptical. Much. Hi, Halen. I've heard of people talking about auras being something that you can uh, detect from someone, but I think it's a very subjective thing, and I certainly don't look at people and sense that I can see an aura or anything from them. You're uh, multi-talented. You have a rainbow of color. Yellows, on the other hand... How accurate will Mary Beth's readings be? Will her subject's colors match up with their characters? The answers later in the show. Can auras provide insight as to who we are and how we behave? Many psychics believe that the color fields given off by auras are biological predictors. Auras are the basis of a lot of metaphysics. The aura tells you a lot about the person and the personality and who that person is. If you can measure it, then it becomes scientific. And if we can image that, that in itself can show that there's an effect. Proof Positive wanted to know if aura readings were accurate. So we invited a group of volunteers to have their auras photographed and then to have their colors read by an aura interpreter. It's these test subjects who will determine whether the readings capture their personalities accurately enough to be judged proof positive. Geraldine, you have a green and yellow aura. Yellow represents very fun, the type of job you would have has to um, give you fun. You have two obstinate colors. <laughs> Greens do not like to be bossed around and yellow 
doesn't mind being bossed around. They will be bossed around, but but like a child, they have a, a, some obstinance to it. I think the most accurate aspect was the aura reading for the combination of the yellow and the green. Needing a job that's playful, needing to be my own boss, um, and having my own business made me feel really good. I think the aura reading does give me an accurate picture because it was so specific. It was very right on for who I am. Next up is Christy. Okay, Christy, I see some red in your photograph here. Reds love to be the doers. The yellow means you're a sunny kind of personality, you're optimistic. Children are very much attracted to the yellows. I can see where the yellow is definitely, you were right on, because children do approach me in stores all of the time, and it's always happened all of my life. Reds are um, also very passionate, um, very sensual, and very sexual. One of the bad things with the reds, they can anger very quickly but you have the yellow to balance that out. Mary Beth's reading of my aura, the red part, I'm not really so sure that I'm that passionate or sexual, but as far as being cheerful and optimistic and having children be attracted to you, that's definitely right on. Um, what I didn't think was right on is when she said that reds tend to anger. His aura colors are violet and white. White is someone who is actually searching for the truth, uh, especially spiritually. Violets don't have the patience for that person who does not necessarily see around the river bend. They can go from um, step one to step 10 without wanting to do the details in between. The one specific thing about Mary Beth's reading that was so right on was when she spoke about me being the kind of person that can see steps one through 10, but have no interest in making steps two through eight happen. Everything about my aura reading was stuff I could really see and get, and, and get clearly. I was really testing her. I wanted to see if she would really come out and, and get, get it right. The readings were 80% on. The last subject is also the most skeptical. You're uh, multi-talented. You have a rainbow of colors. You have green, blue, a hint of purple, and white. Green is one of the mental colors. Anyone with a green aura is, is, is very intelligent, intellectual. Blue is the color of someone who has deep, deep compassion for other people. It's one of the emotional colors. One of the uh, more negative aspects, you could say, of the green so intelligent and, mm. and they can wow. process uh, analytical information so quickly. Mary Beth said I, I um, tend to be a bit arrogant about it and she's absolutely right. Um, uh, from early on I've always noticed that I've had an aptitude towards learning and uh, picking things up and I pick things up very easily. She just looked at my picture and she just hit a lot of the things right on. I would say she was probably 85% correct just from looking at the colors. Auras remain a subject of debate. With no accepted method to scientifically test the phenomenon, we must rely on anecdotal evidence. In this case, three of our four subjects, including the most skeptical, found their readings remarkably accurate. Impressive evidence indicating that auras can be an intuitive gauge of our personalities. <laughs> Dig deeper into the evidence at sci-fi.com.